Hi, this is Joe McNally with Adorama TV, and today we're going to deconstruct a photograph and show you how to build it piece by piece. Adorama TV presents Photo on the Go with Joe McNally, where you'll go behind the scenes to see how great photos are made. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV. The reason I go to Adorama, it's a real store with real people, and I've got friends and associates there who have guided me through all my camera purchases for years. So, uh, I was in Estonia, okay, the beautiful city of Tallinn, and they gave me to work with these traditional models in, well, I don't know how traditional the models were, but they were wearing traditional Estonian costumes or historically significant attire, you know, from the good old days. And so a very colorful, ornate finery, if you will. And so we wanted to do kind of a formal portrait. And I noticed in the hallway this curved sofa. And there was a certain symmetry about it and a certain dignity. And I thought, well, uh, I'll follow up on that symmetry by placing the model right in the middle of the sofa. So let's take it kind of a step by step, shall we? So the first thing about being a photographer is, is you realize you have to occasionally be other things. In this instance, a furniture mover. Uh, I noticed the sofa. The wall it was against is up here, let's say. And the sofa was right up against it. That didn't work for me. One of the tenets of location photography I, I try to observe a great deal of the time is to, if possible, move my subject matter away from the background. Now that's not a universal, but I would say I strive to do that maybe 80-90% of the time because it creates two different zones, a foreground zone and a background zone, and if there's separation between the two distance-wise, I can hopefully achieve control over each and light them to a different tenor and quality independently of one another without spilling and splashing light on either area. So I move the sofa away. So this semicircle of a sofa ends up coming out oh, probably 10-12 feet somewhere's in there. All right, so now I put my model right here. Okay, so as I mentioned, and her dress is kind of formal and all that sort of stuff, and okay, that's a lovely rendition of the dress. Fantastic, and the sofa's like that. Okay, so she's middle, away from the wall. First step. So I'm seeing the whole sofa. So what has to happen with the placement of my light? I can't get my light physically on a stand any place too close to her. So I'm using a C-stand, okay, an Avenger C-stand with a mini boom. Uh, the mini boom uh, replaces the normal extension arm that's on a C-stand. So it gives you more reach. So the light is off this stand up high and it's an easy box hot shoe soft box, a 24 inch easy box hot shoe soft box and it's kind of up and over the model, which is a nice light, strong light, but a little severe for her. It, the reason I took it and pitched it down towards her was I didn't want it spreading this way. So when she's looking right at camera, the light is kind of up in here at a fairly severe angle, which means that she's going to get a little shadowing in her eyes. Uh, we'll deal with that as we go. But my main concern was to light her well, but not spill too much light back here and the upper placement of the softbox coming down at an angle towards her, coming this way, helped me do that. Okay, so one of the first rules of location work that I try to observe, I did observe, in fact, by getting my main light, or my, my first and foremost, my primary light, hopefully right, in the right place, and that's the very first thing I do. So I observe, as I said, it creates a bit of a steep angle for her eyes but I will deal with that with, via the mechanism of a fill light. So now my concern is the background. I wanna get a little life into the background. So my next move is to place another speed light, an SB910, behind her on the floor right back here. And again, it's all about symmetry, so it's directly behind her and it's radiating this way onto the wall. Now the glow that's on the wall there is pretty minimal. You can change the dimensions of the glow, if you want, or the highlight area by just simply clicking up or down on the speed light or taking the dome diffuser on or off. If you have the dome diffuser on, the light spreads. If you 
angle it up, the light goes up the wall. If you zoom it and take the dome diffuser off and bang it into the you know, lower part of the wall, it's gonna get uh, a hot core down by the floor and then very, very quickly fade as it goes up, which is pretty much what I did here. I tried to bang the light low into the wall so the fade is right at the edge of her shoulders, sort of. There's kind of a semicircle of highlight and it's just up above her shoulders and separates her. That's the mechanism for that. And also that light has a warm gel on it. It is lighting about a half a cut or so, as we refer to it, half of a CTO or color temperature orange, convert to orange gel. It's a warming gel and not a particularly overwhelmingly strong one, about half of a full conversion. And it gives it that little goldish kind of aura back there. I didn't have to go particularly hard on the warmth quality of the, uh, of the gel on the light because the wall back there itself is kind of like yellowish brown. So all I had to do was just goose it along a little bit and accentuate the warm tones back there. Okay, now on to the eyes or filling the eyes. What I did again was use a low light. This one goes right in front of camera. So my camera say is right about here, okay? Fairly large camera. And below that is another speed light. This is my third group, okay? So this is, this main light is group A. This background light by virtue of being a background light is group C, but my mid-range light or my fill light in here, I always use group B. So this light is on the floor looking up at her, okay, right here. And it's got what we call a snooted grid on it. It's kind of this funnel shaped thing. It's a flashpoint snooted grid, okay. And I use these things a fair amount. I use snoots and grids and all sorts of light controllers, but this one actually has become, uh, you know, kind of a, a bit of a staple for us. And we use it a great deal to just flash a little light in the eyes, okay? Just a little wink light. It's very low power, and all I'm trying to do is literally wake up the eyes. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing this. You could put a soft umbrella up at the camera as an on-access fill, which is a nice way to fill, but what do you, what's the price of that? You lose a little control of the light. It starts to splash about the set a little bit. Maybe it mitigates or softens up the feel of the light I'm putting in the background. Okay, there's that. Some photographers, and I do this myself as well, uh, use a weak ring light at the camera, just as, say, minus two little fill light right on the axis of the lens, wakes up the eyes. That's another way of going about it. So this is just another method of trying to pop a little light in the eyes. Okay, we use this guy, okay, the snoot and the grid, okay, the grid provides another element of control, pop it on the end of it, okay, and then you have a light that is, you know, even from a distance, it remains very vectored, very kind of, you know, concentrated. So I'm just popping this into her eyes and it opens them up. Now her expression is a little severe. If you look at her, you know, she's, and I'm working with her at that point, I'm having some fun, I'm saying, okay, give me a look that's very severe because the lighting is kind of, you know, a little bit hard, a little bit of an edge, and I'm, I'm teasing her, I'm saying, well, imagine you're a, a lady in waiting at the court and you're treacherous and you're plotting the death of the queen or something like that. Give me one of those kinds of looks, you know? So I play games with my subjects. I try to give them roles. I try to get their mind off of the idea of being photographed and just try to enjoy that relationship that builds on the set. But the main thing here is the building of the photograph. I did the main light first. It's right up in here. Now, if, if I did a little side drawing over here, say her head looking at the cameras like this, that light, that 24 inch easy box is at a pretty severe angle. Like I would say something like that. Okay. Coming down onto her in a very, very steep fashion. So just be aware of that. It's overhead. It's out of my frame and it's coming down on her at a pretty steep angle, which does, and then require me to fill from the front. And the background separation is important, for sure. Put a little low glow. Now, here's a luxury item, okay? You could get away with this, with just this overhead softbox. But the fabric on the sofa is pretty, pretty, you know, it's dark. It's, it's, it's soaking up light, that fabric. So you could do this a couple of ways. You, in post-production, you could probably pull that material out a little bit. What I chose to do on location, because I had a little extra help, is I took two other speed lights, this is, again, this is kind of down the road here, a little bit of a luxury item. And I zoomed them very tight to 200 millimeters. And I had folks hold them 
off the frame over here. One and one. And what they did was they bounced a little splash of light down into this area of the sofa. So it just, it's minimal, okay? And it's running again in the third group, very, very low power, just a little glancing light off of that fabric to kind of help in the uh, you know, post-production of the picture or the aftermath of the photograph, make sure that there's a little detail in there and that you don't have to work so hard at pulling it out. Little glance of light, okay? So basically, main light, background light, then a fill up front. Those are the main bones of the lighting. And then a little luxury item, if you want to go down the pike a little bit, maybe you know, have a couple extra flashes or something like that hanging around, you uh, put a little grace note off of the dark area of the fabric on either side of her. The photograph is really about symmetry. If you notice, the overhead light is pretty central. The fill light is very central. The background light is right in the middle. And then there's an equivalent highlight on either side of her. Once again, Joe McNally for Adorama TV and the perhaps little known, you know, or maybe not widely used uh, right now, uh, piece of equipment that we employed to good effect in this was a Flashpoint snooted grid, okay? And Flashpoint, as you know, is uh, the brand of Adorama. You can get them at the store and, um, you know, um, no moving parts, very lightweight, really affordable. I throw them in my bag all the time. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.